um, uh, invocation and the pledge. And today joining us, uh, compliments of District 5, is uh, Monsignor Andrew Barreras, who's with the Reformed Catholic Church. And uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Can everyone please stand for the invocation? Thank you for inviting me here. It's my pleasure. We come here today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a group and nature the bonds of community. We meet to serve our community, to use our resources wisely and well to represent all members of our community fairly, to make decisions that promote the common good. We recognize our responsibilities to the past and the future, and the rights and needs of both individuals and community. Bless our agenda and be fruitful and for the common good. Grant that our Board of Supervisors have ears to listen to the people they serve and the wisdom to act for justice. Bless our efforts with clear insight, our deliberations with wisdom, our work with clarity and accuracy, and our decisions with impartiality. As we trusted servants, we ask blessings on our deliberations and on, and on our efforts here today May we act wisely and well. Thank you for being our source of guidance today. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Monsignor, for joining us today, and thank you, Supervisor Gallardo, for inviting him. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Andrew. Once again, thank you so much. I, uh, Andrew's a dear friend, and uh, he has been involved in the community um, for, for many, many years. And uh, anytime there is something uh, going on out there, you can bet to sure he may not dress the part, but he is there and he is rolling up his sleeve and he is doing his part to help. So thank you for all you do for our, for our uh, families. And thank you for coming here and sharing those, those blessings with us. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry, I did hear the prayer. I was in the back, but uh, one thing I missed was uh, Mr. Gardo's confession. <laughs> and so I didn't know if uh, Monsignor, that was gonna happen after the meeting or in front of the audience today. It's a public forum. Yeah. It is, yeah, yeah. Mr. Chairman, it's not on the agenda. <laughs> oh, very good. Very good. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we're excited today. Uh, well, first of all, we're excited as always to start off with the roll call. And so we will do that at this time. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you'll please call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Sellers. Here. Supervisor Chukri. Here. Supervisor Hickman. Here. Supervisor Gallardo. Here. And Chairman Gates. Here. Thank you. All right. So we were excited about the roll call, and we're also very excited that Jose Santiago has joined us again today from Animal Care and Control, and it looks like he's got a friend with him. Maybe we've got some more spring training uh, excitement going on here. Yeah, he's wearing a little bit of a jersey today to... Uh welcome our spring training friends into in the area. Um, this little guy right here, I named him Jasper this morning, and he came in with another stray, believe it or not. Uh, the two of them are about the same size, and they were just wandering the streets together, and now they are safe in the confines of the shelter until they get adopted. He is about three months old, and he is very vicious, if you can't tell by the kisses he's giving me. Um, we do believe him to be... <laughs> <laughs> we do believe him to be a Chihuahua Dachshund mix, also known as a Chihuini. 
And so his adoption fee is about $300. And we've also had a couple of exciting events. I know a couple of you folks were at our exciting event about two weeks ago with the half a million dollar donation from the Petco Foundation. Um, we are very excited to be able to do some good work with that money. And this morning, thanks to the Bissell Pet Foundation, we hosted a free spay and neuter event, which is still taking place at the shelter. Um, we rely heavily on those kind of events to keep the shelter population down and uh, keep little ones like this guy in homes rather than in shelters. So he'll be at the 27th Avenue in Durango location and he is ready to go. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I don't think he's gonna be there very long. Uh, he's gonna be in high demand. Thanks so much, Jose, for joining us and, and for uh, everyone at Animal Care and Control, the great work they do. And thanks as well for men mentioning the Petco uh, grant. And I know Supervisor Gallardo and Supervisor Hickman were there. Thank you for representing the, the Board of Supervisors there and, and really a very, very generous grant. Uh, Madam Clerk, are there any announcements or corrections to the agenda? Mr. Chairman and members, I do have two very quick corrections to uh, make for you this morning. The first is on item number, excuse me, item number 67. And it actually is not something in your agenda. The backup document refers to the second amendment and the attorneys have corrected that to the first amendment. So it's just a correction to the language in the document itself. And number 70 um, on your agenda, we are simply going to add the amount of the bid is $81,487 okay. for item number 70, which is on page 43 of the printed agendas. And the bid amount is $81,487. Excellent. Any other uh, changes? That's all I have this morning, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you so much for that. All right, now it's time for the planning and zoning portion of our agenda. Um, and so if we could go ahead and have Jen and Darren join us. Our first item is uh, uh, Plains Bumstead. This is PZ1 and PZ2. Um, do you have a, a presentation for us or? No, Chairman, that is on consent. Okay, Thank you. great, that's right, it is on consent, all right. Uh, so, uh, do we have uh, uh, do we have a motion at this time, or any uh, questions or uh, comments from uh, my colleagues? Being no comments, Mr. Chairman, I move for approval items PZ one and PZ two. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Thank you for the second, Supervisor Gallardo. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. All right, the uh, motion passes unanimously. Uh, now we're going into the regular portion of planning and zoning uh, agenda, starting with PZ3 through PZ5, Northern Crossing. Do we have a presentation or any stipulations on this item? Yes, Chairman, <laughs> on we these do. these items, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, PZ3, 4, and 5 are related cases for requests to rezone a property in the Loop 303 corridor at the northeast corner of Cotton Lane and Northern Avenue from Rural 43 to commercial and residential. PZ3 is for a comprehensive plan amendment to our White Tanks Grand Avenue area plan. That designation, um, the request, the reason for the comprehensive plan amendment was triggered because the rezoning request exceeds 40 acres. The companion agenda items, PZ4 and 5, are the rezoning requests for commercial 2 CUPD and R16 RUPD with a density of approximately four homes per acre. The commercial CUPD includes a stipulation prohibiting adult entertainment and medical marijuana uses. We've received no letters of opposition from the community. These cases were continued from the February 13th agenda due to concerns that the city of Glendale expressed regarding provision of sewer and water to the site. Since that time, we have worked with the applicant and I've been in touch with the city of Glendale, and we have added a stipulation to address that concern, which I will be reading into the record. So therefore, staff is recommending approval of this amendment and rezoning request for several reasons. One, there's already similar densities along this corridor in Cotton Lane. 
The proposed development provides a mix of residential and commercial along the Loop 303 corridor. Luke Air Force Base has no objection. And as I mentioned, the developer has agreed to add a stipulation addressing Glendale's concern that states within two years of approval, the developer must provide the county with a pre-annexation agreement to City of Glendale or a will serve letter indicating that they have access to um, water and sewer from a utility provider. Um, so as I mentioned, the case has several revised steps, which I'll need to quickly read into um, the record. Case Z 2018 ha which is the um, commercial rezone, has a modification to condition C1 that states that development of the subject premise and surrounding properties will warrant the need for traffic signals at the intersections of Cotton Lane and Northern Avenue and Cotton Lane and Granite Vista Loop South at some future time. A traffic impact study must be submitted with the plan of development application associated with this zone change. If the traffic impact study demonstrates the development will trigger the need for this traffic signals design and permitting these signals must be provided by the applicant as part of the project site improvements. And then I have a couple of steps to read in for Z2018092, which is the residential rezoning. And that is also C1 stating um, again that there may be um, warrant the need for traffic signals at the intersections of Cotton Lane Northern Avenue and Cotton Lane and Granite Vista Loop South at some future time as development progresses. And an updated traffic impact study must be submitted with the final plat application associated with this preliminary plat. If the updated traffic impact study demonstrates this development will trigger the need for traffic signals, design and permitting these signals must be provided by the applicant as part of the subdivision's infrastructure. Also, stipulation J, within two years from the date of the Board of Supervisors' approval of Z2018092 and prior to issuance of any residential construction permits, the applicant shall provide the County Planning and Development Department with an executed pre-annexation service agreement with the City of Glendale that identifies the detail for when the pro proposed project will be annexed and the provision in water and sewer service. In lieu of pre-annexation service agreement, the applicant may provide a will serve letter and or verification from a water and sewers provider that demonstrates the site is within the provider's certificate of convenience and necessity for sewer service. I believe that is all that I need to read in on that case. So, whew. okay. <laughs> thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Do we have any comments on this? Uh, do we have any public comment slips on this case? On these cases? I just want to be sure which cases are we P talking about? Three PZ. and four. PZ. Yes, PZ. Three, three four, and three, five. Three, four, and five. I do not have any slips on those cases. Oh. All right, Supervisor Hickman, this is in your district, so I'll turn it over to you. If, um, Chairman Gates and Supervisor Hickman, if I may make one further statement, there was a typo, um, an F4, which had minimum lot coverage. It should be maximum lot coverage, just to read that into the record as well. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Hickman. Well, <laughs> growth is coming out to the West Valley, and this is a very, this is a very large uh, parcel up against the up against the 303. Um, I do want to tell my colleagues I, I had a, a quick discussion with the mayor of the city of Glendale. Um, not not uh, meeting with any of the staff. I know that PNZ has reached out to them with their concerns, and I'm I'm hoping those will allay those concerns. But um, as I told the the mayor, as he discussed the need for keeping the 303 in that land available for commercial and industrial growth. We also have an area that's already parted off for commercial and industrial growth, and that is around in the, in the Glendale planning area, which is all around Luke Air Force Base. So I understand why Glendale does not want homes up against the 303 for future use, but all I could say is then Glendale needs to come together and decide what they want to do with that area, and they can always annex. So uh, at this point, as you can see, the, the new stipulations um, addressed, I think it goes towards some of those concerns, at least for this parcel. Uh, and I, again, I'm going to say out in public, I do have concerns as we continue to develop uh, more and more higher density residential and unincorporated areas. So 
Uh, with that being said, I move uh, to approve item PZ3, PZ4, PZ5 with the uh, previous uh, um, stipulations that were addressed here in, in the meeting today. All right. Thank you very much, Supervisor Hickman. We have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, unless there are any other uh, comments from my colleagues, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Uh, those items pass unanimously, which now takes us on to PZ6, which is Seasons at Riverside. Ms. Pekorski, do you have anything for us on that one? Yes, I do. Thank you, Chairman, members of the board. This case is a request to rezone about 37 acres at the southwest corner of El Mirage and Maryland Avenue from R1 RUPD, I'm sorry, R10 RUPD to R16 RUPD. The proposed density is 3.43 dwelling units per acre. This item was also continued from the February 13th agenda to allow the developer to work with the neighbors to address their concerns regarding density and traffic. So regarding traffic, the developer is providing a left turn lane on Maryland Avenue to provide access to the site, 124th, and they will also be required to, to submit a traffic impact study, see if there's additional improvements that need to be made. And also, Maricopa Department of Transportation is evaluating and will be ultimately installing a traffic light um, at El Mirage within the next several years. Regarding the density, the applicant made adjustments to their site based on their communications with the neighbors. Specifically, they're increasing the size of the lots that are adjacent to the existing homes. We have spoken to the neighbors who have withdrawn their opposition, and this case is no longer triggering a supermajority vote. So therefore, staff is recommending approval of this request. I do have a couple stipulations that I need to read into the record for this based on the developer's work with the community. And that is, first of all, um, from stipulation B, and adding stipulation um, nine is that 90, the lots 90 foot, lots one through five will be 90 foot wide and 13 through 17 shall be limited to single story. Condition I is added to read. Oh, I'm sorry, all of, I, thank you Darren for the clarification. All of the lots are 90 foot wide and limited to single story, just kind of and then the, the numbers are just not um, consecutive. Condition I is added to read that the following conditions shall be res the responsibilities of the subdivider, home builder, developer, and shall not be construed as a guarantee of disclosure by Maricopa County. The subdivider, home builder, developer shall provide a separate written disclosure statement for the signature of each buyer, acknowledging that the subdivision is located adjacent to or nearby a mining operation that may cause adverse noise, odors, dust, vibration, and other externalities, and that such uses are legal and should be expected to continue indefinitely. This disclosure shall be an exhibit or addendum to the purchase contracts and CCNRs. The disclosure shall, shall be presented to the prospective home buyers on a separate single form for them to read and sign prior to or simultaneously with executing a purchasing agreement. The above reference information shall also be colluded with the subdivision public report to be filed with the state of Arizona Department of Real Estate as required by Arizona Revised Statute 288486 and Revised Statute 288464. Responsibility for the notice reps with, rests with the subdivider, home builder, developer, and shall not be construed as an absolute guarantee by Maricopa County for receiving such notice. The final plat shall contain the following statement on the cover sheet in a prominent location. This property is adjacent to or nearby a mining operation that may cause adverse noise, odors, dust, vibration, other externalities. Such uses are legal and should be expected to continue indefinitely. And I have one more um, to read in, which is um, stipulation A. Development of the site shall be in substantial conformance with the narrative entitled Seasons at Riverside, consisting of seven pages and stamped received December 17th, 2018 and the one-page zoning exhibit entitled Seasons at Riverside Conceptual Site Plan Option 30 and dated February 25th, 2019. So whew, another long read. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. <laughs> yes. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Supervisor Chukri just asked for you to repeat that. 
<laughs> All right. Well, I believe we do have a representative of the applicant here um, uh, who can start either, you know, any, uh, great to see you again. Um, if there's any presentation you'd like to make or, or uh, certainly uh, if you'd be willing to make yourself available for any questions from my colleagues. Uh, good morning, Chairman, members of the uh, board. Uh, Brennan Ray, 702 East Osborne, here on behalf of the applicant, Richmond American Homes. I'll keep my comments very brief this morning. Uh, you had uh, enough hearing about me uh, at, last, uh, at the last hearing. Um, I just want to uh, publicly go on record, and Richmond would like to go on public record as uh, thanking um, the neighbors, uh, really, uh, to be able to come together in such a short time and to be able to work out uh, what we believe is, a, is, a, is an equitable solution to the problem. And I can kind of touch on that really quickly. Um, but again, uh, Allison and Carol, who are here, they were very instrumental in helping us go through things. This is the site plan that is before you today. Uh, you will see that that black outlined area, that reflects the change that was made at the, uh, before the last hearing dealing with the mining condition. The important change is that area that is highlighted in black on the south. You'll recall that at the last meeting we were proposing that those be 45 foot wide lots and I believe there was approximately 17 of them, 16 or 17. We have now, through working with the neighbors, uh, agreed to limit all of those to 65 foot wide lots. Um, and that is uh, reflected in the modified condition A that staff read in. Um, this is the site plan that is before you. I would like to clarify one thing uh, as it relates to modification of stipulation B. There was a new nine that was added, and that dealt with the one-story restriction of the 90-foot wide lots. The area in light yellow along our north and west are the 90-foot wide lots, but we are not, and the neighbors are fine with us, not restricting all of them to single story. Specifically, what the stipulation should read is that the 90-foot wide lots, one through five, and 13 through 17 shall be limited to one story. And that's consistent with the discussions and representations that we've had with the neighbors the entire time. Um, we're certainly, again, appreciative of staff uh, and their willingness to work with us on this. Certainly uh, appreciative of Supervisor Hickman of you and your staff uh, working with us on this, working with the neighbors to come up with a solution that we believe works for all. And so with that, uh, happy to answer any question, but we would request uh, this body's approval in accordance with the staff report and the modified stipulations that were presented by staff. Thank you, Mr. Ray. Any questions or comments? Uh, Supervisor Hickman? Not yet, Brennan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. So we do have uh, two speaker slips here, so I would uh, invite you up to come up and say a few words to the board. Um, Carol Frizon. Perfect. All right, Allison, please. Thank you so much, though, uh, Carol, for joining us. I'll be talking. Excellent. <laughs> okay, thanks for the warning. You'd like to go second. Okay, good got morning, it. Good morning, Chairman, and good morning, Supervisors. I really want to tell you what a good experience this has ended up being at, after our negotiations. I appreciate the continuation you granted us. Um, I have really appreciate your help, Hickman, in coming out and actually looking at our neighborhood, seeing what our issues were, figuring out how you can solve it, and getting us time to work it out between us. So I just commend you all, and um, I, it actually has turned out to be a good working relationship with Jose Castillo and Brendan Ray, and we are happy to have this behind us. <laughs> so I just want to give my thanks to all of you. Thank, Thank you, Allison. Thank you so much. Carol Frizzlon, 6107 North 127th Avenue, Litchfield Park. Supervisor Sellers, I'm sorry you were absent. It wasn't your fault. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would like to echo Allison's appreciation for the board and especially Supervisor Hickman for giving us the continuance. We were able to work out an agreement during that two week period of time with the uh, developer and uh, I uh, also like to commend, as Allison did, Brennan Ray and Jose Castillo, uh, re representing the owner and uh, home builder, respectively. Uh, Supervisor Hickman, thank you so very much for visiting the site and dealing with the issues, especially of traffic 
and also of the mining operation. It was excellent to move the homes a little further away from El Mirage Road. And also the stipulation, long though it is, I think is, is excellent. Um, we uh, uh, appreciate uh, the cooperation, as I said before. Uh, they left, I don't know, Brennan, right? Here they are, right here. Uh, uh, Brennan and, and Jose, uh, without their cooperation, we couldn't have come to an agreement. So uh, thank you again for, for the continuance. And also I'd like to say, Super Hill, Supervisor Hickman, thank you for listening to us when we came to your office, and thank you for reading our letters. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Mr. Frizon. And with that, I will turn it over to Supervisor Hickman. Well, I, it is very nice that you guys are both wearing at least half smiles today, because you weren't when you both walked in. Um, and, but I know that it, it created negotiation. I, I know that your neighbors want to see, it would just be a wonderful thing to see raw dirt and let the kids play over there. Um, but you guys came to an agreement and you and I asked you to keep your ears open and say you know things are changing and I appreciate you guys going in with a good attitude to talk to to Brandon and Jose and Brandon and Jose I super appreciate you guys you know as as you negotiate it becomes I know it understand and totally understand it becomes real dollars and maybe real dollars lost to Richmond and less less homes to sell and things but I think we're really getting to an area that I it got to a part where that I felt better about the density, I felt better about the protection of the neighborhoods around, and I felt better about the protection of the mine because these new homeowners, they've probably not ever lived next to a mine, but now they're going to know that if they're gonna buy a home, that mine is in existence uh, for the long term. I do have one quick question for McDot. Um, I heard loudly from the charter school owner uh, that they were upset about the traffic. And I, you know, I'm upset about the traffic too when a charter school comes into an area and uh, plops down there and then starts whining about the traffic. I'm more concerned about the safety of the parents and those kids in that charter school as well. So a light, a stoplight has been talked about. I sent a letter today uh, to that charter school and I hope that they participate in uh, not just helping get a light there quicker, but also participating financially in getting a light there. My question to you is, if they sign up and say, and according to their letter, they're concerned, and I think sometimes your concern has to hit your wallet a little bit too. If, if they choose to participate financially, does that move, um, or will that move the light up? If the warrants and the traffic studies show that there needs to be a light there, and we have public and private participation in, in putting that light in, will that move it up into the, uh, into the queue of, of putting a light there? Chairman, Supervisor Hickman, board. Um, we could potentially do that. Um, we have a fiscally constrained tip, so what will have to happen is if we move one project in, we need to look at balancing that with other projects that would either need to move out, depending upon the funding situation. Okay, but does it help? <laughs> it does help because if extra funding's coming in, we don't have to bear the entire cost of that signal. Okay, very good, and I hope, I hope, the, I hope the neighborhood heard that. You know, and I hope the developer heard that too. So I, I will do the best I can to make sure that there's plenty of participation to, to get, I think that will help the, the traffic and the safety issues out there. That is, El Mirage is growing and growing and growing that, that stretch of road and the traffic with spring training and everything else. I think something needs to be done quicker than later. But I don't, I can't, I can't go outside our procedures in order to do that, but I can kind of push it a little bit. Okay, so thank you, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, um, uh, sometimes we do these negotiations in a district because we know the district and it makes it easier uh, when I ask for a motion and to vote on something like this that you saw that there was, there was some um, citizens that were around there. It, I, I hope, I, I hope our, our hard work together has made it easier uh, to support this motion. So. Mr. Ch uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we support with the added stipulations 
uh, so addressed. I hope I would like to motion and move forward item PZ6. Uh, we have a motion in favor of this item and Supervisor Hickman, I just want to, oh, yes, Madam Clerk. Uh, Mr. Chairman and Supervisor Hickman, I would just like to clarify on stipulation B, number nine, um, I think earlier it was that all would be single story, and this gentleman clarified it was one through five and 13 through 17. Which are we on the one through five and 13 through 17? Um, Madam Clerk, that is what I read into the um, record, so you are correct. Thank okay. you. Okay, I apologize. I no, just missed great. that one point, and I wanted to be sure we got oh, that that's, correction. That's fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for that clarification. So we have a motion in favor of PZ6. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Chukri. Um, and I uh, just want to uh, comment um, that, you know, it's great to see a case like this. It was contentious where the supervisor has gotten personally involved, gone out there. And uh, I tip my cap to the neighborhood and for your constructive involvement. And then, of course, uh, the home builder as well. That's great. I wish they all went like this, but it doesn't happen by accident. It's with a lot of work by everybody involved. So, so kudos to everyone uh, involved. Any uh, comments or questions from my colleagues? All right. If not, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you Brandon. Thank you, Jose. And that uh, moves us now to PZ7, which is uh, Dollar General at Jackrabbit. Ms. Pekorski, do you have anything on this item? Yes, thank you, Chairman, members of the board. This final agenda item is to rezone a parcel that is just to the north of Jackrabbit Trail and McDowell Road from Rural 43 One Acre Zoning to Commercial 1 CUPD. The property is within Buckeye's planning area, and the development will consist of, as you mentioned, a Dollar General store. Staff believes this is a good use for the area. The site is adjacent to an existing commercial zoning, and the county area plan and Buckeye's general plan have uh, designated the site as industrial or commercial. So staff is recommending approval of this request, and I have no stips to read in, so I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All right, well, I see uh, Paul Gilbert here on behalf of the applicant. Mr. Gilbert, would you like to say a few words? I always like to say a few words. <laughs> I knew that, you know, I, you never ask a question you don't know the answer to, right? <laughs> there you go. Uh, for your record, my name is Paul Gilbert, 701 North 44th Street. We're here in a very enviable, enviable posture. We have staff support, plan support, unanimous planning commission support. And it, although it pains me to give such a brief presentation, mm -hmm. I have nothing further to add. But if there is opposition here, I would like to reserve my balance of my time for revival. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gilbert. I don't see, Madam Clerk, is that correct? We don't have any other speaker slips on this uh, item. PZ7? I have, I have none others. Okay, well, thank you for your remarks, Mr. Gilbert. I think in the, the time that I've had the opportunity to hear from you, that's probably the shortest presentation I've ever heard. So, well I trust done. it'll be rewarded. <laughs> so with that, I'll turn it over to Supervisor Hickman. This is in his district. Uh, thank you. Um, well, I, I have had some opposition to it. I think you guys might know it. And it was the business due south of, of this parcel, uh, Longhorn Acres. So um, I didn't get a chance to talk to him directly about it. He just uh, wanted to make sure I knew that this was bringing or likely to bring more traffic in his area. And I, my, my hope would be that it brings good, the good kind of traffic that they would also uh, use his establishment as well. So. Uh, with that, I have no reservations. It, this area is is on a very getting busier and busier road. Which, sorry, Mitch, this might have to look at be looked at again. Jackrabbit Road is getting very busy in that in this area with I-10. Uh, I know about it because I see it every day going to my place of work six six miles south. So, um, anyway, uh, congratulations. I would move that we approve item PZ7. Second, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you for the motion and the second. Uh, unless there are any comments or questions, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? 
Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much, Mr. Gilbert. Thank you. Your brevity was, in fact, uh, rewarded. I'll yeah. Make a note of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we're going to move on to the clerk of the board items. We have liquor license applications, 5A through D, special event licenses for Adelante Foundation, Sun City West Tennis Club, AZ West Canine Support Center, and Peace of Mind Foundation. Uh, do, do we have any uh, speaker slips on these items? None, Mr. Chairman. All right. Well, with that, uh, I would entertain a motion uh, on these liquor license applications. So moved. All right. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Sellers. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now we move on uh, to additional clerk of the board items. Uh, item six is an impact statement hearing for the proposed La Celesta Irrigation Water Delivery District. Seven and eight are road de-annexations de from the city of Buckeye to Maricopa County. Then we have a transportation item, number nine, which is a patent easement abandonment, road file number PAB-0068. Do you have any uh, speaker slips on these items, Madam Clerk? None, Mr. Chairman. All right. I would entertain a motion on items six through nine. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Chukri. Second. And uh, thank you, Supervisor Hickman, for the second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now we'll move on to county officers. Under the assessor, uh, we have number 10, request for review over baseline. Uh, number 11, county attorney grant from Arizona Auto Theft Authority and budget adjustment. And uh, 12 is replacement warrants, victim compensation program. Under elections, number 13 is a request for review over baseline budget. And uh, I will just uh, start this off um, by commenting. Uh, we now, I have the latest number here on uh, dollars for a uh, request uh, for review over baseline. And we're now up to, by my latest count, $146 million. Um, just for historical perspective, back in the good old days, uh, FY 2018, it was 55 uh, million. And um, last year, it was 87 million. So we're up to 146 million. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I'm going to anyway. And my colleagues are certainly free to join me. These numbers are getting astronomical now. Uh, and so we're going to be uh, looking at each and every one of these, as we always do as a board very, very closely, but I just want everyone to, to know as, as the, it's like the Jerry Lewis telethon, as the board continues to go up, we're getting into, into very high numbers. I understand that everyone has the best of intentions when they bring these forward, but I just everyone, I want everyone to be aware of the numbers that we are looking at. And uh, great to see our a recorder here, Mr. Fontes. Thank you for joining us. And thank you uh, for your uh, team's uh, close work uh, on our working group that's looking at elections. Really appreciate, and Keely as well, really appreciate your cooperation on that effort. And I understand there was a little field trip yesterday uh, to Pima County. So thank you for going down and uh, examining how they do things uh, down there. And again, thanks for, thanks for everyone's hard work. Uh, uh, so with that, I would open it uh, uh, for a motion on these items. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 10, 11, 12, and 13. Thank you, Supervisor Gardo. Do we have a second? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor. I, I will know, and I, I don't disagree with you on over the baseline, but but it, we, we do need some capital expenditures to happen in elections, and, and I know that uh, the recorder's office, as well as Ms. Rich and the committee, is working really well on that. So. Uh, but I, I don't disagree with what you're saying. But in this instance, I think some of this is warranted. So, and I, and I and I agree with that. And thank you very much for that comment, Supervisor Chukri. Any other comments or questions? All right. I I would I would just say I appreciate both of your your comments as well. I'm um, we do know that we're we're taking the time to study these issues on on elections. So, I'm I'm sure we're gonna we're gonna be uh, broached with some things. Hopefully, if they're if they are doing the job that we asked them to do, I, I'm sure that's going to come to a come with a certain cost. But your your top end number, I, I like how you referenced the Jerry Lewis telethon, but uh, <laughs> for a kid, Phoenix kid like me. But um, I appreciate that. That is that number continues to grow every every uh, 
meeting and I've had years of discussing that. So it, it, it blows budgets and we don't get away with it at home. Uh, so we need to take a hard look at this when it comes to this too. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. Uh, unless there's anything else, uh, we do have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, that motion passes unanimously. Next, um, we have, uh, continuing with ca uh, county officers, we have a recorder at number 14, request for review over baseline budget 15, reimbursement memorandum of agreement with the federal government. Uh, under the sheriff's office, we have 16, which is the agreement with vested interest. 17 is an IGA with Gila County, and 18 is the MASH unit non-cash donations. The board will now consider items 14 through 18. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items uh, 14 through 18. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Sellers. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Motion. Oh, all opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, next, uh, under the Treasurer, 19 is offers on previously offered tax deeded land parcel near Cave Creek Road and Lone Mountain Parkway. The board will now consider item 19. Um, now we do, I believe there is an offer there. Uh, so uh, do I have a motion on item 19? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion to, to approve. We, we don't want to hear your auctioning experience, your auctioning <laughs> voice. Uh, so uh, I would make a motion to approve this item, please. Perfect. This is the Bruce for for the the highest bid. Correct. Excellent. All right. Thank you so much, Supervisor Chukri. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. All in favor of item 19, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion passes unanimously. Now we got another one of these. Item 20. Offers on previously offered tax deeded land parcel near Higley Road and Main Street. Now we've got two offers on this one. So. Uh, would one of my colleagues like to make a motion? Oh, I apologize. We have a third offer. We have a third offer. Okay. So we have, uh, uh, we have Chad Clough at $300. We have Bruce Batetto at $150. And then we also have uh, Tim Most, uh, who's representing Velda Rose here. Um, with, with an offer uh, as well. If you'd like to come forward, thank you for joining us. I may have to get into that auctioneering mm. here. Good morning and thank you for uh, allowing me to, to present a bid here. On behalf of uh, Velda Rose United Methodist Church, um, we ha own three sides of that parcel. Um, if you have a description of that, um, the fourth side is a um, waterway, uh, drainage ditch, storm drainage ditch. Um, somehow this became an orphan in the buying and selling of property there on our corner of Main and 56th Street. Uh, we've been buying and selling property there um, to accumulate about 10 acres uh, over the years, starting in about 1964. And somehow this um, very, very small parcel uh, measures something like uh, 20 by 165 feet, which more than half of that is the drainage ditch itself. So we're talking a very, very narrow strip of, of land. So about the only thing you can do is put up a clothesline or raise spaghetti on uh, such a small parcel. Um, at this time, I would like to um, bid $350 on behalf of our church. Thank you very much. I'm going to turn to Supervisor Chukri on this item. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, I'm aware of uh, Mr. Most and, and where this uh, property lies and how majority of it is adjacent to the church property. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion to uh, accept Mr. Most's offer of $350. Thank you very much, Supervisor Chukri. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Sellers. Any uh, questions or comments on this from my colleagues? All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you so much. How do I pay for this? <laughs> have you chat with the our office 
Okay. We'll, we'll work it out with the treasurer. Okay, thank you. That's right, we gotta handle the details, right? All right, thank you so much. Uh, next, we're moving on to the judicial branch. Uh, under adult probation, we have item 21, request for review over baseline budget. Item 22, exemption from markings and issuance of non-governmental license plates. Under juvenile probation, item 23, is a request for review over baseline budget. And for superior court, item 24, is a request for review over baseline budget. Uh, the board will now consider items 21 through 24. What's the total now? <laughs> it's yeah that I gave you the total uh, is not that was with everything that's on the agenda and maybe it's maybe even some other stuff to come is 146 million mr. chairman I, I w would go ahead and uh, make a motion to approve items 21 22 23 and 24 thank you supervisor Gallardo do I have a second second mr. chairman thank you supervisor Hickman we have a motion and a second all in favor of these items please say aye aye, aye. All opposed? That motion passes unanimously. It's a growing county. That's right. This, this reflects the population growth. We are growing. We are the fastest growing county. There is no question. <laughs> Under animal care and control, uh, 25 through 27 donations, One Love Pitbull Foundation, Hope Emergency Animal Rescue, and various donors. Thank you. Uh, items 28 through 32, kennel permits. Item 33. Request for review over baseline. And under emergency management, we have item 34, request for review over baseline. Uh, and 35, one time addition to the fleet. Board will now consider items 25 through 35. Mr. Chairman, um, I make a motion to approve items 25 through 35. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Chukri. All in favor of these items, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next, we move on to environmental services. 36 uh, grant funds from National Institutes of Health. Uh, under equipment services, 37 designate officer for the creation of an ADEQ account. 38 renewal of vehicle exemptions from markings. Under facilities management, 39 transfer of expenditure authority for fuel stations project. And guess what? Number 40 request for review over baseline. Board will now consider items 36 through 40. Move for approval items 36 through 40. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next, under finance, we have 41 funds, transfers, warrants. 42 is a resolution to apply for tribal gaming funds. Under human resources, 43 is market ranges and 44 is the employee discount vendor donation. Human services, we have 45, amend agreement for weatherization assistance program. And 46 is grant funds from U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Board will now consider items 41 through 46. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Chukri. Do you have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Sellers. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of items 41 through 46, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion, motion passes unanimously. Thanks so much. Now we'll move on to human services uh, continued. Uh, 47 is early termination of the lease with Against All Odds Youth Family Services, LLC. 48 is a request for review over baseline. 49 is receipt of Bright Spot Award from National Head Start Association. And 50 is grant funds from the National Association of Workforce Boards and Innovate Educate. Under planning and development, we have 51, request for review over baseline. And under procurement, we have 52, uh, general maintenance and repair services, and 53, which is the information technology solutions and services. Do I have a motion uh, with regard to these items? Move for approval items 47 through 53, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, uh, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That motion passes unanimously. Now we move on to public health. Uh, items 54 through 57 is to amend IGA's agreements in intergovernmental letters with the Arizona Department of Health Services. ASU, 
Maricopa Integrated Health System. 58 is an IGA with Liberty Elementary School District. 59 is a public use data agreement with City of Glendale. 60 is purchase orders for IGA with Arizona Department of Health Services. And 61 is a contract award for emerging surveillance issues. The board will now consider items 54 through 61. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 54 through 61. Thank you, Supervisor <laughs> Gallardo. Do, do we have a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Chukri. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And we'll con continue with public health. 62, rescind and approve the amended contract with Delta Dental Plan of Arizona. 63 is a data use agreement with the Centers for Disease Control. Um, under real estate, we have 64, which is an agreement with Quest Corporation. And under transportation, 65 through 68 is IGAs with the City of Buckeye, City of Avondale, City of Peoria. The board will now consider items 62 through 68. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Chukri. Uh, do we have a second? Uh, second, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Hickman. All in favor of uh, this motion, please say aye. 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 Right. All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, yes, Supervisor Hickman. Uh, Fran, you said that there, I, I would assume that that vote includes that correction that you made. If, if you get it told to us, then it just, or do we have to point that out? Because you have another one coming up too. I will assume that it includes it. Okay. If you could say it along the way, it would be helpful. But uh, I, I think was since it's intent, marked sir? at the beginning, it's you part of the record. The yes. That was that your intent that it would include Pleasure. the correction? Of course. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, apologize for the delay, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you for that for that clarity. All right. Excellent. Now we're moving on to um, train, or actually continuing with transportation. 69, irrigation easement and temporary construction easement to the Salt River Project. 70, is uh, competition impracticable to A AZ Tech Engineering? And I think on that item we had uh, correction as well. Uh, 71 through 78, these are annexations by the city of Goodyear and the city of Buckeye. And 79 is easement, right of way, and relocation assistance documents. The board will now consider items 69 through 79. Mr. Chairman, I move approval items 69 through 79 with clearly stating that item 70 reflect the amount of $81,487. Excellent. That, that, was, that was textbook. Thank you. Did you get that, Steve? I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I would second. Jerry. All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, next, we move on to Board of Supervisors items. Uh, 80 is the reappointment of Duvia Lozano and Daniel Iniguez to the uh, Greater Phoenix Ryan White HIV Services Planning Council. And then 81 is the reappointment of Jerry Gearing as chairman to the Travel Reduction Program Regional Task Force. Board will now consider items 80 and 81. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Sorry. Second. Ooh. Okay. All right. I had him by a motion. <laughs> yes. We, we got the motion by Supervisor Chukri and the second by Supervisor Hickman. Um, all in favor of these two items, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now we move into transportation. Uh, items 82 through 86, these are setting of hearings. Uh, this is uh, road files number A588, uh, 5928, a572, 5921, and 5922. The board will now consider items 82 through 86. They're all in Shukri's. So moved, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you uh, for that motion, Supervisor Chukri. Do you have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo, for the second. All in favor of these items, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That motion passes unanimously. Now we're moving into the consent agenda. 87 is duplicate warrants, 88 through 89, monthly donation reports, 90, corrections to the consent agenda, 91, tax abatement, 92, treasurer's collections and investment summary for January 2019, 93, property reclassification appeals, 
94 civil penalty appeals, 95 secured and unsecured tax roll corrections, and 96 it deals with precinct committeemen. Board will now consider items 87 through 96. Move for approval, items 87 through 96, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. Do I have a second? Thank you, Supervisor Sellers. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now we're moving right along to the addendum. A1, appropriation adjustment for county attorney special revenue fund. A2 is a settlement in Carla Arnick uh, versus Maricopa County. And A3 is the MOU between the Board of Supervisors and the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. The board will now consider uh, addendum items A1 through A3. Mr. Chairman, would you mind uh, taking item A3 separately? Uh, not at all. Okay. So do I have a motion with respect to A1 and A2? Yeah, I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to approve items A1 and A2. Thank you, Supervisor Chukri. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. All in favor of items A1 and A2, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right, that passes unanimously, which now uh, takes us on to A3. And with that, I'd open it up for any comments or, or questions or, or a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve item A3. All right, thank you very much, Supervisor Chukri. Uh, do I have a second? I'll second it. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Gallardo. Uh, we have a, a motion and a second. Any uh, comments or uh, questions? Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I just made a, a quick couple comments because I don't know how the vote's going to go, but I do know the, my feelings on, on this. Um, and I, there's a, a number of things that I want to let you know how much I appreciate uh, how much time that you have spent and this board has spent on this, on this issue. And the nice thing is we did get a chance to uh, watch a presentation from our sheriff uh, about item A3 in this MOU. This MOU has changed um, from a point where I was getting close to being kind of okay with to, in its further iterations, it's gotten further aw away from that. And I just wanted to make sure you understood my feelings before, uh, before we vote. Probably a, a, a very large thing uh, that weighs heavily uh, on me is that we are getting further and further from our mandates, I believe. and. The second part is I clearly asked our sheriff and his staff, why could we not take a look at other options of fulfilling this important job he has, which is protecting animals when it comes to evidentiary status. <clears throat> and I asked him to take a look at how can we bridge their office in with our animal care and control I asked to find out what other municipalities here are doing with this important function. And my feeling is the costs are so much less when it comes to taking care of these sometimes 200 animals uh, than what this MOU might represent, be it either private dollars funding it or public dollars uh, to maintain it. So. Uh, that being said, I, I don't want to go further down the list other than to thank you for your hard work, and we'll and we'll pr quite possibly we'll see how this continues to take shape. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Hickman, for your comments on that. Um, any other comments or questions from my colleagues? I guess I guess one question, Mr. Chairman, um, and I'm not too sure if, if or Joy or anyone else. Um, I, I mentioned this to Chris the other day too. Um, what happens if, for whatever reason, there is insufficient funds collected in order to complete the project? What happens at that point? Does anyone know? Uh, Ms. Richard, I mean, it, sure. it, it, I'm so happy to. There, there's an estimated amount of money that is yep. to be collected yep. in order to complete this project, but if they fall short, what happens at yep. that point? So I, I think it's a, that's a very, very fair question. And just to kind of level set everyone, here, um, we right now, the sheriff, the sheriff is providing care and housing these animals very close to where we are right now, actually in the middle of this campus, which means that that, that valuable real estate cannot be used for other things. 
if he is successful in raising the funds to place this no longer here, that opens up that very valuable real estate in the middle of our uh, downtown campus for Maricopa County. So I just want to make sure that people people understand uh, that, that that would be one of the ramifications of it. So currently, I mean, the sheriff has already started the process of raising funds for this and has already um, obtained a, a large um, uh, a large donation from, from PetSmart Charities. But if he is unable to collect the funds that he believes he needs to build this, um, the, this MOU gives the, the Board of Super, it, it mandates that the Board of Supervisors and the Sheriff will sit down and determine where we go next. So it certainly doesn't tie our hands as a Board of Supervisor, doesn't mean that, that county funds have to be used to, to bridge the, the difference. That's one of the things that could be discussed since, again, as a reminder, right now the sheriff is going out and getting all of this money from, from the private sector, from nonprofits, so there's no uh, tax dollars that would be used as, as part of the construction. Um, and so, you know, another option may be to just say, time out. Uh, this is not going to move uh, forward any further. But it, this will require a dialogue, which I personally think is a good thing, between the sheriff and the board of supervisors as we continue to partner on this. But nothing is, there's nothing in this that says we have to do X, Y, or Z. We will see how this plays out. Much like Super, uh, Supervisor Hickman has said, we'll see how it moves forward. I, I agree with, with that perspective as it relates to, to this. Joy, would you like to add anything to that? Or Okay, great. Um, other questions or comments from my colleagues? I, I just would like to add again um, that, that uh, I appreciate the work that the sheriff has done and his willingness to go out and raise this money. Um, uh, you know, having said that, obviously we've got to watch all this very closely as it relates to the operational costs because um, the county has been paying for these operational costs for many years and the MOU uh, contemplates that that will continue. But it's not a blank check and I want to be very clear that, that it's not. It is something that will continue to be a part of uh, the, the budget process uh, just as, as it is currently. Um, but with that, uh, I, uh, we do have a, a motion and a second. So unless there are any further comments or questions, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? No. All right, the motion passes uh, by a vote of four to one. Uh, on the next item, actually A4, uh, Mr. Vice Chairman, uh, I'm going to have to step out for this one if you uh, wouldn't mind taking the reins. You bet. I make a motion to approve Clint Hickman as chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your vote of confidence, Thank you. Supervisor Chukring. Um, Item A4, a settlement with 303 Investment Holdings. Uh, do I hear a motion? Motion to approve item A4, Mr. Chairman. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. We'll invite the real chairman back to his desk. Do you have a sandwich? <laughs> Breakfast burrito. Um, Excellent choice. That was, that was <laughs> All right, moving forward with the addendum uh, A5, uh, resignation of public fiduciary and appointment of interim public fiduciary. Uh, oh, thank you so much. My, my other wing man here on my right. Thank you, Supervisor Chukri. Let's try that again. A5, resignation of public fiduciary and appointment of interim public fiduciary. A6, accept resignation and applications for constable of the Kyrene Justice Precinct. A7, uh, resignation uh, from the IDA Board of Directors, and A8, appointment to the Deferred Compensation Committee. The Board will now consider addendum items A5 through A8. I'll make a motion to approve Mr. Chairman with a comment. Yes, please. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. Supervisor Chu. I just wanted to uh, thank Doug Smith for his work on, uh, this is item A7, and I know Shelby and, and the IDA board really, really worked well with him, but it's it's a capital or a, an understandable issue when, when schedules and work get in conflict with, with volunteering. And so uh, I really admire him and what he had to contribute to the IDA board. And unfortunately, we have to accept his resignation, but he's a fine gentleman. So I just wanted to publicly thank him. Thank you for those comments. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Supervisor um, Sellers. Yes, on A6, uh, 
We are currently accepting applications for that position for Kyrene Justice Precinct Constable. So uh, th those will be accepted until March 8th, 5 p.m. Excellent. Well, thank you uh, for jumping right into this here uh, and uh, addressing this, this important item. Any, uh, any other comments or questions on these items? Sir. All right. If not, then all in favor, uh, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That motion passes unanimously. Next, uh, we will uh, recess as the Board of Supervisors. Now we're going to convene as the Flood Control District Board of Directors. Uh, so we have three items, F1, Memorandum of Agreement Modification to Software, F2 is an Appropriation Adjustment, and F3 is Easement, Right-of-Way, and Relocation Assistance Documents. Board will now consider items F1 through F3. Motion to approve items F1 through F3, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor yes. Gallardo. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? That motion passes unanimously. Now we're going to adjourn as the Flood Control uh, District Board of Directors and convene as the Library District Board of Directors. We have L1, which is donations report, and L2, which is a grant from the American Library Association. Uh, do you have a motion uh, with respect to items L1 and L2? Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item L1 and L2. And just a real quick comment. You, um, you know, he'll have been uh, my little diamond in the rough out there. Uh, sometimes it gets forgotten. <laughs> and uh, I've been out there so many times and, 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 and met with the folks. I've met with the chamber, the, the school board, the, the, the town council, and, and everyone in between. Um, and little little projects like this, and it's, this is not even little, this is pretty huge, uh, just goes a long way of helping the people out there. Uh, you know, they have a nice little library out there that's a, that people really do look at. It's, it's right in the middle of the neighborhood, and uh, folks go there to not only just, you know, get their favorite book, but there, there is a, a small computer area there where many of these families just don't even have access to the internet, and this is their only access. So um, I'm just excited and, and thankful that this type of project is, is coming to Gila Bend, and it really does go a long way of serving the people out there. So. I'm appreciative. Well, Supervisor Gallardo, Gila Bend might be forgotten, but not by you. That's yes. for sure. So thanks for your great representation out there in those comments. Do we have a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. That motion passes unanimously. Now we're going to adjourn as the Library District Board of Directors, and we're going to reconvene as the Board of Supervisors. And now it's time for 97 public comment. And thank you uh, very much, Madam Clerk. Uh, we, have a, uh, we have a few uh, items here for public comment. And just as a reminder, uh, we have two minutes for public comment. And uh, we are not allowed under state law to uh, comment uh, on, on the, the comments from the public. So our first one here is Marsha Olson. What's that? Okay. All right. Well, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Um, next is, uh, I'm not sure, Mer Meredith? I'm not sure what the first name is. Tina. Tina. I'm sorry. The I was kind of up there. Would you uh, like to speak this morning? Thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Tina Meredith. I live in Phoenix, and I want to talk to you this morning about the wildlife killing contest that happened in Maricopa County. I first learned of these wildlife killing contests last summer. It was August, and this contest was advertised as, who wants bragging rights in the group? Exclamation point. If you paid a fee of $25, you could enter this contest to kill foxes for one point, bobcats for three points, and coyotes for two points. The object is to kill as many of them that you could find over the course of one day. There was not a check-in or a requirement for teams or a dinner afterwards. All you had to do was provide a grip and grin photo of your dead animals and text them to the organizer who at the end of the day would notify the winner and send them their cash. I could not then and I cannot now fathom or accept that this is a legitimate way to treat wildlife held in public <coughs> trust. 
Since August, there have been 13 more contests that I know of. The 14th is to happen here in Maricopa County this weekend, and there will be at least two more contests throughout March. I have heard the same excuses over and over again from contest participants trying desperately to justify their actions, but there is absolutely no way around the fact that when you reduce animals to points to be accrued for cash and prizes and then waste them, you have sunk to the lowest of the low. This is killing for killing's sake and it gives hunting a black eye. If you guys can help stop this, you should and you can. Of course, a resolution will not keep these guys from killing a bunch of animals for cash this weekend, but you can make sure that when Arizona Game and Fish goes to vote on a rule to ban these contests in the future, that we have the weight of our county behind them. Sorry, thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Next is Linda Ballone. Bolin. Bolin, sorry. Okay. Thank you for joining us this morning. Okay, my name is Linda Bolin. I live in Maricopa County in the city of Goodyear. I'm here today as a concerned citizen imploring you to do the right thing and officially condemn wildlife killing contests based on science, research, and ecology. For the past 15 years, I have actively been involved in public education and community outreach regarding coyotes. I lecture on the coyote biology, reproduction, litter size, dispersal habits, diet, proven and proven non-lethal methods of mitigation on predation. Excuse me, I'm a little nervous. You're doing great. <laughs> Thanks. Years of science and research have proven that most predators are self-regulating in their numbers when left alone. Wildlife killing contest participants claim these contests are necessary in the reduction of overpopulation of coyotes in specific areas. Nothing could be further from the truth. Science proves that coyotes backfill all voids created by wildlife killing contests or removal of the alpha pair. And by the way, the alpha pair are the only two that actually reproduce. They're not like rabbits. Once the alpha pair are killed, all remaining coyotes are free to reproduce and litter size is biologically determined based on available unclaimed territory, number of remaining coyotes, food, water, and shelter availability. In other words, all unclaimed territory previously claimed and controlled by killed coyotes are now up for grabs. The resulting bottom line is backfilling these voids actually produce bigger litters and more pups. To claim wildlife killing contests as sound wildlife management is observed. They do not follow fair chase or the Hunter's Code of Ethics, the, participates, the participants will go on to social media. But if I you can just kind of wrap up your more. thought. Please do the right thing. Maricopa County does not want these in the county. I have an online petition that is still ongoing and I have acquired over 15,000 signatures asking Governor Ducey to please pass a resolution and a law to prohibit this. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, next is Doug Treadway. If you'd like to join us, please. My pleasure. Thank you. Good morning, folks. Good morning. Mr. Chairman, uh, Board of Supervisors, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Doug Treadway. I'm from Dewey, Arizona. And although I'm not a resident of Maricopa County, I served on the town council for Dewey Humble for four years. So I fully understand how difficult it can be to deal with controversial issues at time. It can be a real barn burner. That is why I'm asking you to give serious consideration to organize predator killing contests here in Maricopa County and throughout Arizona. My sentiments concerning the indiscriminate killing of wildlife stems from an incident that occurred 45 years ago in Utah. While watching a flock of Canadian geese peacefully feeding in a marshland, a pickup truck suddenly stopped on the adjacent highway and the occupants opened fire with a semi-automatic firearm. After the truck had sped away and the commotion subsided, several geese lay dead while many others flopped around in their death throes. That moment branded an indelible mark on my memory, knowing the senseless and wanton killing of wildlife has no place in a civilized society. 
The bottom line is I'm not opposed to ethical hunting or prudent predator control. I myself hunted for 30 plus years and worked for 12 years as a big game guide. Killing an animal simply through the thrill to kill is nothing for which any true sportsman could be proud of. Uh, indiscriminate killing contest for fun or prizes crosses that line in the sand. All wildlife which is held in the public trust needs to be treated humanely and with dignity. A question we all need to ask ourselves, when is needless, thoughtless killing ever justified? Perhaps this moral issue can be best summed up by a passage in the book of Ecclesiastes. Verses 19 and 20 in chapter 3 refer to humans and animals having the same identity. One dies just like the other. All of them have been given the same breath of life. It is my humble opinion that by taking a bold stance against organized killing contests, the Board of Supervisors will make a powerful statement. By not taking a stand against this issue, I fear it illustrates a, illustrates a lesson we do not want to teach our children. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time, Mr. Treadway, and thanks for your service up there on the town council. Thank you, sir. Um, next, we have Glenn Bullen. Mr. Bullen, please join us. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for letting me speak. Um, wildlife provides hunters and hunting practices and boredom relief during the off season. Basically, they're practicing. While public awareness and disapproval is growing greatly, as my wife mentioned, with 15,000 people do, signing a petition. Ethical hunting is, is done for rewards and, and not done covertly. There's no consideration to the impact of the local and regional carnivore population the dangers of others to public land because they're using public land to do this. So you could be out there with your family and bullets are flying around. Coyote servant uh, and <clears throat> an essential ecological role in helping rodent control and maintain healthy, vibrant ecological integrity and species diversity. While most have, <clears throat> pardon me, wildlife killing contest most certainly have no place in a civilized society. Hunting is great, but this isn't hunting. This is just killing. Please do the right thing and pass a resolution to ban this in Maricopa. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time and your words. And next we have Matt Francis. Mr. Francis, if you'd like to join us, thank you for being here today. I'm sorry we all have to be here to discuss this, as I believe our society should know better than to be engaging in such morally abhorrent activities. I know we have sent the board information to introduce you to the growing problem of wildlife killing contests. Resolutions are a statement made by local government representative of the greater populace. Rather than passing responsibility to a different agency, City and county boards have been taking leadership roles in shaping their own destinies and supporting the upcoming Arizona Game and Fish new rule. A passing resolution does not simply get filed away to be forgotten. Rather, it is publicized in the media and increases public awareness and support. Past resolutions are also circulated to cities and counties that have not yet considered this issue and increases their confidence in drafting and passing similar resolutions. We know with certainty that the resolutions passed in Tucson, Pima County, Dewey Humboldt, Yavapai County, City of Flagstaff, and next month, Coconino County, have directly contributed to the recent state level decisions affecting Arizona Game and Fish ruling. Um, I have yet more information for you all. Um, I'd like to hand this, thank you. And, um, I know once you've reviewed the science on this, you'll come to the right decision. I'm confident of that. I just thank you for considering this. Thank you very much, Mr. Francis. Next is um, Leon Kolstrom. 
Thank you for joining us today. Good, Good afternoon. My name is Lane Kallstrom. I live in Mesa, Arizona. And I want to start by thanking the Board of Supervisors for reviewing the materials that I've sent over the last month on the topic of wildlife killing contests. I remain at your service with whatever additional information or support you may need as you're considering this topic. Given your position as our elected representatives of Maricopa County, I'm sure you're aware that killing contests are counter to how the vast majority of your constituents want our wildlife treated. There are two states in the country that have state laws prohibiting killing contests, that's California and Vermont. Six other states have pending legislation against killing contests this year alone. There is clearly momentum growing across the country against wildlife killing contests. I know that we all realize that Arizona <coughs> Game and Fish is planning to propose a new rule banning wildlife killing contests. And I also realize it's politically tempting to take a wait and see approach to see what happens with them first. However, I'm here to strongly urge you to act on a resolution now. First, there's no guarantee that Arizona Game and Fish is going to be successful. The process includes going through the rule validation process with the Governor's Regulatory Review Council, and this is not a trivial process. You may recall, but for those who don't know, Arizona Game and Fish tried to pass a, a rule against killing contests in 1999, and it failed through the GRRC process. So success is not a given there. Second, the state legislators that we've been in contact with have been outraged about kill contests, and their best recommendation is to support Game and Fish in passing this rule. We agree with that recommendation. The best way we can support Game and Fish is for us in the biggest Kent county in the state to pass a resolution against kill contests. Thank you very much. Thank you, appreciate your time. Next is Lori Gershik. Thank you for being here today. Good morning. My name is Lori Gershik and I live in Mesa. What is a killing contest? If you ask most people on the street, they will tell you they didn't know such things existed. And most of them, including hunters, would agree. They are shocked and disgusted by them. Killing contests are not hunting. The killers don't eat the coyotes, bobcats, or foxes. Participants in these contests state that the fur is worthless, not worth the time it would take to skin them. So they end up in a pile pumped full of lead to be scavenged by other animals. Contests are not about population control. Coyotes and other predators are territorial and populate their territory based on available resources. These numbers represent a fundamental constant of averages over time. At any given time, you might kill off 50 coyotes, more will be born or others will move into their territory to fill the void. If they feel their numbers are in danger, they will overpopulate and then pair off. But the averages over time will remain that same fundamental constant of nature. This is how ecosystems work when left alone by humans. Regarding protection of property and livestock, when groups of killers have to drive to a designated area where their contests are taking place, it's a safe bet that they are at a location significantly removed from the property and livestock they aim to protect. What then compels a person to join a contest where the sole purpose is to kill the most they can living beings as possible? What is the thrill of the kill? All sentient beings on the planet, including coyotes, feel pain, fear, and death. If you're not the winner of the contest, then the only thing you stand to gain from it is the pleasure derived from inflicting fear and pain in watching the life bleed out of a living creature's eyes. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and for joining us today. And uh, our final, final uh, speaker for public comment is Linda Ruhlman. Ms. Ruhlman, thanks for being here. Thank you. Good morning. 
Morning. My name is Dr. Linda Ruhlman. I'm a psychologist and I want to talk about the psychology of animal killing. Um, to reiterate, a wildlife killing contest is killing for fun. What do the psychological and forensic sciences tell us about people who enjoy killing, um, killing animals? It's widely accepted in these scientific communities that animal cruelty is linked to interpersonal violence. Animal cruelty is viewed as part of a wider dynamic of antisocial as well as violent behavior. Scientific studies reveal an association, what is sometimes frequently called the link, between violence towards animals and domestic violence, including partner abuse and child abuse. Animal cruelty has also been found to be linked to other criminal behaviors. For example, in a very large scale national epidemiologic study, animal cruelty was associated with antisocial behaviors such as fire setting, robbing, mugging, harassing, threatening, or assaulting someone. Those who committed acts of animal cruelty were more likely to have an alcohol use disorder to be diagnosed as having a um, pathological gambling or as having antisocial personality disorder. Killing contests are often a family affair. It is really easy to find contest photographs featuring children, parents, guns, and a pile of dead animals. This type of exposure may serve to glamorize gun violence to children may desensitize children to aggression and reduce the natural compassion that most children have when witnessing suffering of other beings. It's noteworthy that the FBI gathers statistics on crimes of animal cruelty, as does the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, um, noting that this link between animal violence and violence against people. If a man beats his wife and kills their dog, we call that a crime. If an adolescent sets stray cats on fire, we call that a crime. If a father drowns a kitten to punish his child, we call that a crime, and we say that the child was traumatized by witnessing that violence. Dr. Yet, Ruhlman, if you could I am, wrap yep, up. Thank two you. more sentences. When a group goes out with guns to kill as many wild an animals as possible, we call that a contest. So we need to join other communities in Arizona and across the country in standing against wildlife killing contests. Thank you. Thank you very much. That is the conclusion of our public comment. I want to thank everyone who came out to, to speak on, the, on this important issue. Uh, we, we really appreciate it. Uh, that takes us now to uh, 98, which is the supervisor summary of current events. So we will go ahead and start with um, Ms. Rich. Do you have any comments? All right. Supervisor Sellers. Okay, just go on down the line here. Supervisor Chu. I think just, just to echo what you just said, I, I think it's very helpful for us to hear from constituents, uh, and we, we sometimes are unaware of these issues until they bring them to our attention, so I'm grateful for that as well. Mr. Chairman, with that, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Supervisor Gallardo. Uh, nothing. Uh, <laughs> thank you for skipping over Clint for me. Um, i got to put the priorities here. No, uh, Thanks for the folks that come out to, to speak. I, I was never aware of, of some of the, the comments that have been made, but uh, the, I, I think all five offices are, are on it, <laughs> at least inquiry. Um, but, uh, but thank you all for coming out. Um, just a couple of things. In District 5, we, uh, this weekend we have the, the Melrose Street Fair, which is always a huge event right there off of 7th Avenue. So we'll be out there. Uh, we're looking forward to it. They're always fun. You always enjoy the, the food. Uh, always good food to, to, to eat. And uh, we, we look forward to it. So it should be a busy weekend. Excellent. Supervisor Hickman. Well, that's the first, I've, I think, uh, first I've heard, especially when I, I saw Tonopah uh, FFA having a, having a shooting contest when when I have problems already in that area with illegal shooting. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to take a look at that uh, personally to find out what's going on. I have a meeting about that um, this week anyway. So well, I'll, bring, I'll bring that up in this, into discussion. Um, number two, I uh, just wanted to let my colleagues know um, the Sun City West Sheriff's Posse has now not been in service for the last 30 days. And I know that this, being kept informed by the posse that the sheriff is doing some, uh, some training and hopefully putting it in a, a high priority. But I really hope 
um, that that community gets their volunteers back. So I'm, I'm hoping to continue to work with them to try to get at least some cars on the roads to do welfare checks because honestly I can't, cannot believe I, I haven't uh, had pitchforks and shovels down here on me with that. So I hope I'm gonna continue to implore the sheriff's office to get those volunteers back on the road. So appreciate it. Thank you, Supervisor Hickman. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, one, wanted to thank the Greater Phoenix Chamber for having me out last week uh, to speak on the, the state of the county. Uh, we had a, a nice uh, audience there, and it was great to be able to talk about all the great things that my colleagues are doing and that everyone's doing in Maricopa County. And it was very, very well received. A lot of uh, new members to the Greater Phoenix Chamber. So that's great to see a lot of people who moved to the Valley recently and wanting to learn more, you know, being the fastest growing county. We got a lot of new people and new businesses as well. So that was, that was an exciting opportunity. I appreciated the opportunity to speak on behalf of the board there. Um, also, I will be attending uh, NACO in uh, Washington, D.C. next week, and so I'm going to have the chance to speak on a panel about 5G deployment. Um, and so really the opportunity to go and brag about what Maricopa County has done to be a leader on this issue of 5G deployment, and I appreciate the assistance I've gotten from folks here uh, to, to get me ready for that discussion. And then finally, wanted to uh, say thank you to all the volunteers who are part of our judicial branch here in Maricopa County who will actually be uh, working overtime on this Saturday uh, because Maricopa County Superior Court is hosting the Maricopa County Regional Mock Trial Tournament. So we will have hundreds of high school students here all day long uh, and uh, we appreciate their work. I might be there with some people who are pretty important in my life too uh, as well. So I want to thank them uh, for the overtime that they're working but it's best of both worlds because they're working overtime, but the Arizona Foundation for Legal Services and Education is paying for their overtime. Uh, so it's a great partnership and just a wonderful opportunity for law-related education. I just want to thank the courts for their continued support of this program over the years. And unless we have anything else with that, uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thanks so much, everyone. <laughs>